This is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love. And God wants you to know that not only will he fight for you, but you don't have to worry about what the enemy's trying to pull down on you because God is your defense. God's not going to have it. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, for you to know where we stand. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon, this is the key part right here, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19, And I will give thee, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We have authority. The question is, do we usurp our authority in these weird times we're living in? Moving to Isaiah chapter 7, and then I'm going to read the story. Isaiah chapter 7, starting at verse 1 through 7. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved, and the heart of his people as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. What that means is they were, they were panic-stricken. They were beside themselves in fear. Verse 3, Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now, meet Ahaz, thou and Shurizurub, thy son at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fullest field, and say unto him, take heed and be quiet. See, some of you need to draw close to God and just be quiet. You need to still your soul. You need to still your mind. You need to take, you need to command your reactions. You need to take authority over how you feel about what's going on from moment to moment. That's the authority you have. Listen to what he says. Go forth now. Uh, I want to go to verse four and say unto him, take heed and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebrands. For the fierce anger of Rezin in Syria and of the son of Remaliah. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in it, in the midst of it, even the son of Tobiah. Thus saith the Lord God, It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Some of you guys right now in these last days, you're tripping because they're tripping. You're tripping because the people at your job is tripping. And you forget why you're dealing with all these tripping folks to call on the name of the Lord right at every given moment. They say something over here. There's a threat over here. They're warning you that you're going to lose your job over yonder. You're going through all these changes. You feel like a ping pong ball being bounced back and forth on the table. You don't know which way to look. Look up. Be still and look up. God wants your attention. Because once you start divvying everything to God from every moment, your spirit will remain at rest. You won't have to hit the panic button every time you hear something, every time you, you, you hear boo, every time you see something jump up out the box, every time you see somebody manifesting demons on your job, every time you see somebody acting a fool at your house. It doesn't matter. 
Every time you see the politicians getting ready to take the bazookas out and start shooting you down flat, you don't have to worry, baby cakes. You don't have to worry. You need to call on God. He's on your side. He's for you, not against you. You hear me? He's a very present help in trouble. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Just to share a few quick examples. There were times when I worked at the hair salon and it looked like there was a hormone battle going on, bouncing off the walls. And I had to deal with all these females and all their attitudes. And at every given moment, I had to call on God because I had to keep the old man down too. I still got my flesh right here with me. And I know how to act a fool. I know how to talk a fool. But I know first things first, I represent God before I represent myself. So I would always say, Lord, take the hurt out. Take the anger out. It's soon as I feel, Lord, take the intimidation out, that fear, kill it in Jesus' name. Give me your peace. Help me to keep my mouth shut. Help me to be still and let you fight this battle. In Jesus' name I pray. Sometimes you have to lean so hard on God. If you lean on a cane as hard as you must lean on God, the cane would break under you. You don't realize the weights that are thrown on you on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Um, there are times when Satan has got, his, uh, has got a name on you. He's aiming right between your eyes. Because the battle belongs in the mind. And your perceptions and your reactions and how you feel about everything. But let me tell you, baby cakes, it doesn't matter what goes down. When God's ready to bust a move, everybody's everything, everybody, every entity's got to get out of his way because he is the one in control, not your boss, not president, you know who, not governor, you know who, not senator, you know who, not Congress, nobody. God is in control. So sometimes you got to stop looking at what's going on and what he's saying and what she's saying and what he's doing. And you got to focus on God's promises to you and settle your little happy hips down and enter into his rest, the peace of God that passes all understanding. Do not allow yourself to be threatened. Don't even go for the okie doke. That's what Satan wants to do. Vex God's people. Don't be vexed. Don't even buy into his lies. What did God say? It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. And you heard what Jesus said before then. Mm -hmm. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Remember that. All right. Now. We are going to hear a story, Joshua chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 1 through verse 26. Now it came to pass when, Adonai, when Adonazek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how J Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly, because Gibeon was a great country as one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all the men thereof were mighty. Wherefore, Adonazedek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Hohem, king of Hebron, and unto Piran, king of Jarmuth, and unto Jephia, king of Lachish, and unto Debir, king of Eglon, saying, Come unto me and help me, that we may smite Gibeon. 
and it had made peace with Joshua, for it had made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. They always like to pull together and gang up. You know, that's what bullies do. They don't hit you one-on-one. -on -one. They got to get all their entourage with them to come up against God's people. Why? Because they're afraid of you. You're a threat. That's why. Hmm. Verse 5. Therefore, the five kings of the Amorites... The king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Iglon, gathered themselves together and went up. They and all their hosts and encamped before Gibeon and made war against it. <laughs> and the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua the camp to Gigal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. Sometimes you got to get on that phone. You got to go to your friend's house. You got to go to your minister's house. And you got to get prayer. You got to get covering. And a lot of times your own prayer will get the job done. But when they're bombarding you from all sides and you know it's a demonic attack, sometimes you got to call for help. Seven, so Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, fear them not. I say again to you, fear them not. For I have delivered them unto thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. That ought to be reassuring to you. All these people that got threats, all these little mandates going on, fear not. I'm going to start at verse 9. I think I skipped it. Joshua, therefore, came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Bethron, and smote them to Azekah, and unto Makeda. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel, and were in the going down to Bethron, that the Lord cast down great stone. Check this out, y'all. You think you don't have the brains to battle this one. You think you don't have the clout to overcome that one. <coughs> <clears throat> you think your word doesn't count, but guess what? What you cannot do, check out what God does. He can. And it came to pass, I love this, as the Lord discomfited Israel, he slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that, uh, down unto Makeda. I'm sk skipping down to verse 11. And it came to pass, as they fled before Israel and were in the going down to Bethron, that the Lord, the Lord, not Tommy, Billy, or Sue, the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them at Azekah, and they died. They were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Ain't that a trip? God is able, y'all. He is able. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said, in the sight of Israel, sun, talking to the sun in the sky, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon, in the valley of Ajalon. The sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him until the camp to Gilgal. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave of Makeda. 
And it was told Joshua saying, the five kings are found hid in the cave of Makeda. And Joshua said, roll the great stones upon the mouth of the cave and set men by it for to keep them. And stay ye not, but pursue after your enemies and smite the hindmost of them. Suffer them not to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God had delivered them into your hand. And it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a great slaughter till they were consumed, that the rest which remained of them entered into the fenced city. And all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Makeda in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then said Joshua, open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. And they did so. And basically, to make a long story short, they ended their lives. They hung them, they pulled them down, they buried them. End of story. Now, that was the end of that enemy. A lot of you are nerve-wracked. You are you're at your wit's end, wondering, what are you going to do if they do this? And what are you, uh, are you going to do if they put this mandate on you? What are you going to do if they put that mandate on you? What are you going to do if they take away your right to decide what you want to do, what you want to put in your body, what you don't want to put in your body? What are you going to do? What are you going to do if you got to go and, and be with a family member who's dying, but you can't go because you don't have that passport? What are you going to do? Oh, my. Oh, me. Oh, my. Fear, fear, fear bouncing off the walls. Stop it. Be still and know that he is God. Be still. God will make a way where there is no way. You can't go this way, God will give you a pathway that way. He'll get you there one way or another. None of these monkeys will stop your show. If God says, go baby, you're gonna get there. All he needs to say is go. And if you obey and you go, you will arrive. But if you don't obey him, that's when you're in danger. That's what, see, we must obey God rather than man. And that's why you got to stay in his word and stay in his face. You have to know what his will is for you at every given moment. See, when you don't check in with him, acknowledging him in all your ways so he can direct your path, what ends up happening is what hap almost happened in my dream last night. I dreamt I was in the car and I knew it wasn't personal because my husband was driving and of course he was blind so he couldn't drive. But in this dream he was driving and we were just yakking and he was driving and next thing you know I hollered, hit the brakes! And he hit the brakes just in time for the car not to tip over a cliff. There was no sign, no warning, no nothing. The cliff is right there. And see, some of you are allowing other people to get you places. You're allowing other people to tell you where to go and get you there. If God didn't say for you to go, you shouldn't be going anywhere. That's why we have to be really, really close to God right in through here. Because some of you want things and you want it to happen last year. Forget yesterday. That's how impatient you are. That's how strong-willed you are. And through hook or crook, you're going to get that done. Because that's what you want. But you have to remember, God has a purpose for everything under the sun. Now, if he caused the sun to stand still for a whole day, Imagine what miracles he can do for you. Imagine that. He can do miracles. But the problem is, 
We're not really believing God for his miracles. And that's the reason we fall back into our sins and we fall back into our ways and we do what we want to do because we're leaning to our own understanding because we're being consumed and manipulated by fear. You cannot allow that. You cannot allow fear to control you. You can't allow it. So that's one of the things you have to be very, very careful about. We're in a very awkward time right now. The thing you have to understand is that God wrote the script. He wrote the script, not man. Man thinks he wrote the script. The best laid plans of mice and men. Yeah, right, whatever. But they're nothing compared to God's plans. There's a song like peering through a window blurred with rain. Emotions run together in a flood of doubt and pain. We've prayed as best we can. Now we must leave it in his hands. Yet I know when my eyes fail to see, he is able. And even though it seems impossible to me, he is able. And if he chooses not to move in the way I prayed he would, I'm confident he's working all together for my good. I will stand upon his word, for he is able. Questions seem to haunt us night and day. How could God allow my heart to be torn this way? Does he listen when I call? Is he even there at all? Yet I know when my eyes fail to see, he is able. And even though it seems impossible to me, he is able. And if he chooses not to move in the way we pray he would, I'm confident he's working all together for my good. And I will stand on his word, for he is able. And you've got to have that die hard. You've got to have that fixated. You've got to have that concrete foundation of faith that is unmovable and always abounding in the works of God. Because no matter what is shaking, bacon, you will be perfectly still in alignment with God's will, on his purpose, in your lane doing exactly what he wants you to do, when he wants you to do it, keeping your mouth shut when he wants you to be quiet and he wants your spirit to be still and at peace. Remember, no matter what, God is able. He will do the impossible. There's another one that says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for him? He is God, the mighty one, speaks the word and it gets done. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? You got to think about that. Who is your daddy? <laughs> I just love that line when I think about the Lord. It stops me from fearing. It keeps me settled and stable and still. Where are your eyes focused on? The only thing that made Peter sink was not gravity, was not the natural workings of the water, of nature. No. The thing that made him sink was fear. Fear now. Fear. That's what made him sink. Don't allow fear to pull you down. Because as long as you keep your eyes focused on Jesus, you can walk on water too. If God sees there's a necessity for you to walk on water, 
and you have the balls to ask him to help you do so, you will. See, that's the problem with most of us as believers. We don't think to ask because our mind, our own reasoning, lean not to your own understanding. Our own reasoning, our own understanding, our own belief system says, oh, that'll never happen. Not for me. No, not for me. God doesn't have time to be bothered with the likes of me. Baby cakes. Get your mind off you. Get over you. And concentrate on the one who's able. Concentrate on the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. God is the headmaster here. Not you, not the enemy, and not your enemies. No, God is the one in charge. Be encouraged. What does the word say? If God be for you, who can be against you? Right. Be encouraged and know no matter what's going on in these last days, no matter what laws come down the pike, no matter what mandates they press on you, no matter what your jobs require of you. Do you know if you believe and walk away from that job, God can have something so much better because you made a stand for him. You have to hear God for yourself. And if God says yay, then yay. If God says nay, then nay. If God says nay, you say nay. If God says yay, you say yay. You act accordingly. And don't fear the loss of income. I have never made a stand for God and got fired for it and did not have another job. I never got fired in my life except when I made a stand for God. And God made sure another job was waiting two days later for me to start working at, making more pay and working more hours. I'm telling you, you the reason a lot of you, you bow, you fold, is because you don't really believe God can have something better for you. Or you haven't really asked him, not all of you, God makes exceptions in certain conditions for certain situations because his love understands there are people who are in need and some things won't get done for them with the mandates. We get that. This is not about condemnation. This is, is about reminding you who God is if you're starting to feel backed up against the corner and you're being forced to do something you don't want to do. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You ask God to open up another door, he will. He will. It's how bad do you want it? And how high do you believe it? Or how strongly do you believe it? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No, there's nothing impossible for God. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, exceedingly, abundantly, exceedingly, abundantly above, above all, all that you could ask or think according to the power that works in us. Does your faith have power. If it doesn't, you better ask for some more. He'll even do that for you. See, God will, as Pastor Cushman used to say, God will stack the deck in your favor by any means necessary. And all you have to do is ask him to. We have not because we ask not. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Be encouraged.